Hi, you're back with Dr. Kelly Pearson, part three on fats. And we're gonna talk about how we should cook with fats and what do we get to eat each day or what should we try to eat each day. It's interesting, historically, we're, we're sort of going backwards in terms of what we used to do, recommending that this might be actually a bit healthier. As you recall, we talked about saturated fats. They don't have any double bonds. They're fully saturated with hydrogens and that makes them solid at room temperature. And as a result, they're more stable and they oxidize less. That simply means they don't turn into free radicals as readily, preventing you from degeneration, from inflammation and cancer development. So what does that mean in real life? Well, cooking under high heat suggests that we should use saturated fats. Well, many of us have been using olive oil and other oils to cook in our walks, in our high heat pans, but in essence, we'd be far better off from a health perspective to use the saturated fats such as butter or coconut oil or palm oil or yes even the bacon fat from yesteryear if you are not a vegetarian. That means you should use your oils drizzling your vegetables and on salad dressings and that type of thing. But the balance really is you need some monounsaturated, polyunsaturated and saturated fats on a daily basis. Eating just one type is not going to ensure full health. It's interesting for people to wrap their arms around the concept that you need fat to lose fat. But if you're fat phobic, you're gonna have a hard, hard time of letting your body's efficiency level go up so that you can actually start to burn the fat. Not only is it necessary for production of your hormones and insulating your nerves and many, many other things, but when you take a little fat in on your tongue, it curbs your appetite. It mitigates your desire to eat more and more and more. So these are examples of saturated fats that I try to get in every day. I cook with the coconut oil. I use butter. Um, you'll see on the top there, Kerrygold butter is actually from Irish cows that are not exposed to any type of of a poor quality food or antibiotics. So it's actually an organic butter. And Land of Lakes is another organic butter that you can readily get in most grocery stores. Then you'll see the palm oil, which is something that is not as frequently used. But as you realize, all of these things are gonna stay solid when taken out of the refrigerator. And important that you try to get a little bit of these at each meal. Now we talked about the monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, and they each have different roles. Some cause inflammation, such as in omega-6s, and some reduce inflammation, such as in omega-3s. But these are examples of foods with all the critical fats that I try to get in a little bit every day. A couple handfuls, small handfuls of nuts, a little avocado in my green drink in the morning. I may eat olives in my salad and I will take fish oil unless I'm able to consume fish that day. So the quick summary is that we've been told that, hey, fat makes you fat and it's gonna cause heart disease and it's gonna cause stroke. And sadly, we are not finding the data to support this statement as clearly as maybe we had assumed years ago. And in actual fact, we have to get some good fats in our diet. So don't forget, however, when people have tell us that fat makes you fat, I would argue that really that's not the issue in today's world. That if we have excess sugar on board from carbohydrates, whether it's a lot of sugar from foods with high glycemic index, or it's just straight up sugar that, that influences the amount of sugar in your bloodstream right away, you simply will not burn the fat. Your body will never give up that fat if there's sugar to use as its fuel. And the next session we're going to talk about this, this next idea that excess sugar is really what's behind much of the damage to our arteries and our high blood pressure and subsequent stroke. So in our next session we'll talk about a little more about the truth about cholesterol and I'm sure you will find that incredibly informational. Thanks so much.